one of the more common places where we use projectile motion is in the bouncing ball problem where essentially we have a ball that is dropped from a certain height and then it is allowed to bounce twice and then it is caught again when it bounces to its maximum height. There are three scenarios in which this can happen. The first one is in an ideal world. So an ideal world means that this object is going to bounce and the bounce would be instantaneous. So there is no contact time with the ground and also no energy is lost, which theoretically means that that ball would continue bouncing to its original height forever. And the way that we would show that on a velocity versus time graph is we would show that when the object is dropped, it starts with an initial velocity of zero. We have chosen downward as our positive direction. And so we say that that object accelerates downward. We know at an acceleration of gravity until it reaches its maximum velocity just before it hits the ground. Now, since we have been told that in this scenario, the maximum, there is no contact time with the ground, we show with a dotted line that instantaneously the velocity changes direction, the ball is now bouncing upward, and we say that it leaves the ground with the same velocity that it arrived at, just negative now. Once it leaves the ground, it continues as a projectile, meaning acceleration is constant, reaches its maximum height, and then falls down until it hits the ground again. Note here that the velocity is temporarily zero at its maximum height. Note also that it reaches its same initial velocity because no energy has been lost. Once again, the dotted line represents the bounce. And as the question has stated, we see that it reaches its maximum height before it is caught after its second bounce. You will see here the dotted lines represent the bounces, so we can see that it's bounced twice. These lines should all be parallel because the gradient of a velocity time graph gives us the acceleration. Then for our displacement versus time graph, we have been told that the ground is the reference point. So this object starting out above the ground starts out with a negative displacement. We know that it would fall slowly at first until it strikes the ground. We know then the displacement will go back into the negative direction where it reaches its same maximum displacement as it started because no energy has been lost before returning to the ground for the second bounce and then bouncing back up to its original height where it would be caught. Again, important to show that that displacement remains constant from the height that it is dropped from. The second scenario that is common is one that still has an instantaneous bounce, but now energy is lost at each bounce. So we show that by once again showing the velocity increases as that object falls. The bounce is instantaneous, which shows an instantaneous change in velocity. The difference though is that as it bounces, it loses energy. So the velocity with which it leaves the ground is not equal to the velocity that it arrived at the ground with. So we show that by showing that also, once again, the velocity that it reaches just before the second bounce is less than the velocity just before the first bounce. And then once again, it loses energy before bouncing back up again. So as we can see, because energy is being lost with each bounce, the velocity is continually decreasing with each bounce. Note that this refers to energy being lost in the bounce and not being lost to air resistance. This is shown in our displacement versus time graph by showing that it starts with its maximum displacement from the ground, it accelerates until it strikes the ground, and now what happens is it bounces, but not up to the original height. We can see clearly that the new height that it reaches is lower than the original height before returning to the ground, bouncing once more, and then being caught at a height that is even lower than the second bounce. So as we can see, the energy is being lost, and that is shown in the lack of kinetic energy because the velocity is decreasing. Our final example is one where the bounce now actually takes a certain amount of time. It takes time for the ball or object to change its momentum as it strikes the ground and then accelerate upward again. So once again, this object, as it falls, velocity increases at that constant acceleration of 9.8 meters per second. The difference now is that there is no longer a dotted line showing an instantaneous change in velocity. What we now have is a very sharp 
line that shows that the velocity changes direction. Again, energy is lost, so it does not leave at the same velocity that it strikes the ground with. It leaves at a lower velocity before accelerating upwards once again, before moving upward once again, and again not reaching that original velocity because energy has been lost. And then we show again that contact time with the ground with a very steep horizontal line before this object bounces once more and reaches its maximum height again. So here we can see that there is now a period of time that passes between when it strikes the ground and when it leaves the ground. And then we show that on a displacement versus time graph by showing that this object accelerates towards the ground but now remains stationary on the ground because the object is in contact with the ground so the displacement does not change before bouncing back up to a height that is not equal to its original height at which point it returns to the ground and maintains contact with the ground for that second bounce before bouncing once again to that height. So the one thing that is common in all of these is that the velocity, the gradient of those graphs remains the same because that object is only acted upon by gravity and therefore the acceleration and gradient which represents it remains constant. It is important to understand the difference between these. The dotted line represents a bounce because it shows an instantaneous change in velocity where with our third example we show that velocity does not change instantaneously and that steep gradient there represents a rapid deceleration and then acceleration in the negative direction.